we prepare for everything in life, uh, for work, for uh, college, for uh, you prepare for everything, but you don't prepare to be a parent. And that's, if you're a parent, you will know that that's the, the single most important the task question. you have. Um, so Storybook pretty much is the, the only app in the world to combine infant massage techniques, bedtime stories, and music to help children relax and sleep better. Welcome everyone to Pack Talks with BJCB. Today we have got Francisco Corneo, co-founder and CEO of Storybook app, uh, how they help uh, babies have a good uh, uh, sleep and especially how it is helping parents to have a, a trouble-free night. So uh, welcome uh, Francisco, let's hear from you. Thanks Jose for having me here. Uh, really happy to tell you more about Storybook. Great, so uh, before we sp uh, speak about Star uh, Storybook app, uh, I want to uh, know more about Francisco Corneo. Uh, can you uh, tell more about yourself in terms of where do you come from and uh, uh, currently where are you uh, based out of? Absolutely. Um, I'm originally from Ecuador uh, in South America. I'm currently here as we speak, uh, but my family and I um, have moved uh, in the last few years. We've been in Australia. Australia. Uh, we lived there for two years. Um, and now we are coming and going from the US. Um, the plan is to relocate in Florida um, for good. So, so yeah, but I'm, I'm, today I'm speaking uh, to you from Cuenca, Ecuador. Wow, great. So this is first one part of the globe I have not uh, reached out to. It's great to talk to someone from uh, Ecuador. Before I speak about uh, Storybook app, uh, I uh, read about you and I could come out uh, that you have started something known as uh, Family Fi. Uh, so uh, can you uh, talk about that? Sure, so the Family Fi is the name of the company. Um, so we created the company with, with a clear purpose and it was to help parents. That's, that's pretty much what we have in mind, uh, use technology to help parents. And, and the basis for that pretty much is that we prepare for everything in life, uh, for work, for a college, for uh, you prepare for everything, but you don't prepare to be a parent. And that's, if you're a parent, you will know that that's the, the single most important task you have. Um, and it makes sense that you need preparation tools, help, guidance to, to achieve the best you can uh, as a parent and to bring the best out of your child. So um, with that purpose in mind, the first product we developed was Storybook. And um, that's all about Storybook. It's, it's about helping parents get their kids to fall asleep. Great. So uh, whose idea was a storybook uh, app? It was Daniela, uh, Daniela's idea. Uh, Daniela is my co-founder. She's my wife. So uh, we, we are uh, a couple doing this, this venture together. Um, and it was absolutely her idea, 100% hers. She started doing these techniques by herself. And then she realized we can create an app out of this. It, it's making a lot of uh, impact in our kids. Imagine what, what this can do in kids around the world. What does this app does for the uh, users, uh, especially parents and the babies? Uh, how does it work? Great, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so Storybook pretty much is the, the only app in the world to combine infant massage techniques, bedtime stories, and music to help children relax and sleep better. So when you open the app, what you will find is that um, the app is actually for the parent to see and for the kid to listen. So the first important thing uh, here is that the, the kids won't be looking to an, an iPad or an iPhone or a, a mobile device um, because for many reasons, it's, it's not recommended, especially before bedtime. And if you think about uh, nowadays, uh, kids have so much screen time with virtual uh, schooling and, and, and all of this. So it, it, from the beginning, it made sense to us to create an app that is for the parent to use and for the kid just to listen. Um, so it's, it's pretty uh, simply designed so the kid won't get distracted about these techniques. The parent will only follow the, the guidelines. Uh, so as an example, uh, the, the, the app will be telling a story about ants crawling on the back of a mountain and you will be recreating those uh, footsteps in, in your kid's back. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it works. It's pretty simple, but it's, it's extremely powerful. In one of your interviews, I could hear that uh, uh, because of this uh, process in terms of you uh, do the massage and the kids listen to the music and the story and the parent gets to massage, uh, there is a skin-to-skin -skin contact and there, is a, there are some uh, 
uh, good hormones that gets generated. Uh, so uh, exactly. can you uh, uh, enhance on that a bit to understand a little bit more in detail? Absolutely. So um, the massage techniques as such um, have tons of studies about uh, the, the, the impact they do. Um, on one hand, you have the stimulus your hands do to the muscle and the skin of the baby or the kid. But on the, uh, on the other hand, there's also the component of the physical touch. And that's the most important thing. So it doesn't matter if you do the techniques wrong. The actual important thing is actually touching in, in showing affection physically to your own child because this will produce um, an increase in oxytocin hormones, uh, which is the, the hormone of uh, love and, and happiness. So it will create this really, uh, feeling of, of feeling loved and happy. And on the same uh, token, it's going to reduce um, uh, cortisol, which is the stress uh, hormone. So as you do this, and the cool thing is, as you do this, the kid will feel more relaxed, more happy, and you will, you will too. So your body will be doing the same thing, reducing cortisol and increasing oxytocin. And, and the plus thing on, on, on doing this is that melatonin will be released as well. Melatonin is the hormone that helps you to enter uh, the mood stage uh, for sleep. So the kid will get sleepy and so will you. So it's, it's really powerful within your body. Amazing. Talking more about from a startup point of view, uh, uh, for every startup, uh, the name of the startup becomes a very key factor, uh, so that it uh, becomes uh, the brand recall becomes very easy for the uh, users. So, how did you end up uh, deciding on the name uh, Storybook? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I often take uh, weeks and weeks of thinking names of companies and products and. I do this complex ma matrix where I put all the, the things that uh, symbols that make sense and words in different languages and how to make sense of all of that. With the storybook, it was pretty easy. We just sat down with the idea that Daniela had and we were thinking on a name and it made sense to us. The storybook, we're telling stories. It's all about storytelling. And, and it, it was a short, simple, sweet name although it's, it's quite popular and it's, it's a broad name and you can think of many things with Storybook. Uh, right now, if you uh, enter Storybook in the App Store or Google Play, uh, chances are that you will find us first. So yeah, we managed to, to, to own that word pretty quickly. You have come out with an application, so mobile application. So uh, how much time it took for you to develop this and how did you do that? You, you did it all by yourself or you put up a team to bring the content together? Yes. Um, we created Storybook without uh, knowing a single line of code. Uh, wow. Neither Daniela and I know how to code, but we were lucky enough to surround ourselves with people who knew how to do this. So we, we uh, guided the process uh, at the beginning, uh, outsourcing developers. Uh, so uh, it's nice to know that uh, you, you went ahead without even knowing coding and then you exactly. put up a team and uh, got everything together. That's, uh, that's great because there are a lot of uh, founders who have got uh, ideas uh, which has to be, uh, which involves a lot of coding. Uh, and they think whether I should give it to a third party or a, I should recruit someone and make them do the coding and maybe they will run away with all the codes and the idea. So uh, they keep uh, thinking whether it's the right thing to do. But I can, uh, looking at your uh, uh, journey, uh, it's interesting to see that you have actually gone ahead. I think it's about having the, the right mindset. You can say the, th the same if you think I, ca I can only code, but I, I don't know how to market a product. I don't know how to do sales. So uh, you, you won't be able to know everything. So you have to be uh, cool uh, about uh, outsourcing some things or partnering with someone who knows those kind of things. But at the end of the day, you need all the set of skills. Right, absolutely right. So uh, how old is this uh, now? Uh... So we released the MVP by mid 2018. Um, it took around a year for us to, to actually commit full time and put all our efforts uh, after seeing the early success, uh, but from uh, the end of 2019 till now, things have really exploded. The downloads have increased uh, by over a thousand times, and the revenue as well. So um, it's been a it's been been a qu quite a an interesting year for Storybook. Uh, so since you uh, spoke about revenue, and uh, for any business, especially startups, revenue is a, a key. Uh, uh, differentiator in terms of uh, for even for the investors and uh, for the founder as well. Uh, so what is the business model that you have for a Storybook app? Sure. So Storybook is a subscription-based app. You can download Storybook for free. You have a free limited content 
and you have a premium yearly plan, uh, depending on the country, ranges from $36 to $50 a year. Um, and um, that will give you access to uh, absolutely all the content, all the stories, all the music, uh, techniques, and new cool features that uh, we're about to release. Great. Uh, currently, how many languages you have uh, on your uh, Storybook app? Storybook is available in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And despite that, we have subscribers, paying subscribers in over 150 countries, which is it's really cool. Oh, wow. Great. Uh, and uh, uh, to just to understand a little bit more in detail, uh, so you, you, do you have uh, more uh, Spanish users uh, for your app? That's correct. Um, we started with um, Latin America, um, and we grew, grew quickly there. Um, and then we, we entered the US from the Spanish uh, influence, the Spanish speaking influence. But now the, 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 the demography that it's growing the fastest is US English. So uh, I think that 70% uh, Spanish speaker base that we have now, it's going to be uh, uh, decreased in a matter of a couple of months. So probably half oh, and half. Great. Uh, great. And are there any plans to add uh, any more languages into this? Yes, absolutely. We plan to release two new languages by the end of this year. Um, by next year, we plan to um, add a, at least four to five. We want to grow it for 2022. We want to grow aggressively. So what is the age group that you cater to? Uh... That's, a, that's a really cool question. Um, most parents think of infant massage as something that it, it's meant for babies, which in fact, uh, it's wrong. Uh, massage techniques are, are good for even for grownups who, who doesn't enjoy a massage in somebody reading your story sounds like a great plan. <laughs> so, uh, in our user base, we see a uh, storybook has around 55% of users with kids three years old and, and younger, and around 45% users with kids four years old to uh, 10 year olds. Uh, in both, in both uh, age brackets, you will see the same benefits, better sleep, um, this um, a strong bonding and feeling more connected with your kids. So. So yeah, you can pretty much use it in a broad range of ages. And, and the content is scattered to, to those uh, ages as well. You have content uh, stories for babies, stories for toddlers, stories for uh, older kids. So yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, so uh, I could see that uh, there is an option for a free usage or monthly, uh, you can pay for the uh, stories. And uh, there is also an annual subscription. Uh, so uh, how do you retain uh, uh, the consumers or the parents, uh, because parents are the one who are using it. So how do you retain them? Uh, 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 is there a new story that you keep adding so mm -hmm. that they come back to, uh, to you? There's a, a few things uh, we are just implementing on, on the retention side of things. Yeah, definitely new stories, uh, increase engagement, uh, increase usage. Um, but um, we have two, two interesting things here. If, if your child is probably four year old uh, or older, I'm, I'm thinking your, your daughter will probably really like this. Uh, once they use, the kids will be the ones asking for their parents for their storybook time. So when, when in the past it was crazy to, to get your kids to bed, now your kids will be telling you, I want to go to bed now because I want my storybook time. So kids will be one of our main retention uh, techniques <laughs> for, uh, older, uh, for, for older kids. As for babies, it's a little bit more uh, complex because uh, the parent will have to infer that the, there's actually a benefit. So the most obvious benefit is uh, increase in sleep. Um, so that's something that we want to, to, to uh, keep showing for parents, even if at day one it's, it's challenging or you didn't manage to get the results that you want. Sleeping, uh, it's, about, uh, it's a habit. It's something that you have to create a habit if, you, if your sleep schedule is, is crazy, it's all over the place, it's gonna take a, more time, it's gonna get more complicated for a kid to sleep. But if you keep using for the three, first three weeks, um, you use the storybook at least 10 times, it, the results will be pretty much guaranteed. So that's, that, exactly, that's, that is exactly where we are working, trying to get the best experience possible in the first three weeks. And that has a direct impact in our retention long-term. Great. Uh, so uh, for when uh, the, parent and a child when they uh, when we would try to put a kid on to sleep uh, the experience would be different across uh, across uh, geographies across um, nations and even across families uh, so it can be different so uh, how does this reach out to uh, all type of people and uh, uh, and how do you see that is there any 
specific uh, set of uh, families or people who end up uh, saying that no this is not working for me has that been a case for you not really um, again even uh, we haven't done uh, efforts on on scaling in other countries um, as I, I told you we have subscribers paying subscribers in 155 countries and we just have spanish english and portuguese so despite all of that we have a growing user base throughout the world and that shows you that despite the the language despite the region the culture storybook is is relevant because uh, as, because of a simple reason uh, who doesn't want to receive an, a massage while somebody is reading a story to you and playing some relaxing music like it's something that every child loves especially if, if it comes from um, the loving hands of mom or, or dad so that's something that, although on the content side, we, we are trying to create stories, inclusive stories from throughout, throughout the world. Um, we see that kids everywhere enjoy this. Great. So you spoke about uh, reaching out to, that you have a, a base for at uh, around 155 countries. Uh, the, you have got consumers using from different parts of the world. So uh, how do you manage this? How big is your team in terms of managing all these uh, things? Or our team was six people um, three months ago. Now it's 14. So we grew really fast in the last um, couple of weeks um, in terms of uh, team size. And um, we are fully remote. We started as a remote company since day one. And so um, the, the, the COVID-19 didn't affect our, our uh, work um, flow. Uh, and we have a team uh, scattered throughout uh, Latin America. We have a team in Spain and we have a team in Australia. So, so it's, yeah, five countries in total. So oh, it's wow. really cool to, to have that diversity in the team. Yeah, great. So one is in terms of the diversity and second in terms of your managing the time zones as well uh, with people in different parts of the globe. So that's an interesting way to uh, tackle uh, uh, or rather uh, provide the 24 by 7 support because you have got people in Australia and Spain mm -hmm. and uh, Latin America. So that takes care of at least major time zones so that's uh, yes. uh, nice to know that you spoke about uh, covid and covid has not been uh, kind uh, to uh, many of the uh, businesses uh, leave alone startups even bigger businesses have actually uh, gone through a tough time um, but uh, uh, you spoke that you started off uh, as a remote company uh, a company based in a remote location and you were working from there so actually uh, it uh, has helped you in terms of uh, sustaining that and even growing yeah, yeah. Um, on, on, on one hand, uh, we were prepared for this because we were working remotely from, from different uh, uh, countries and, and we had a, a, a good process in place. So we, we had a, a physical office um, that n nobody ever used. It was just for meetings for every now and then. And on the user side, um, we were lucky enough to be able to help tons of families who were dealing with anxiety, stress, um, with their own kids, the, 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 the generally kids now feel that this is a holiday uh, schedule. They, they go to bed really late. They wake up sometimes later, sometimes earlier. So we were lucky enough to help a lot of families that were uh, going through these uh, troubles, um, especially inside of anxiety and stress and as, yeah, helping kids, kids to sleep better. Great. I can uh, very well correlate to that in terms of when uh, you know, both the parents are working and uh, now everyone is at home. So exactly. it is uh, good to know that uh, uh, an app uh, actually comes out and tell, tells uh, that, uh, okay, here we are, we are going to help uh, the kids as well as the parents to reduce the screen time. In doing that, you are actually increasing the uh, parent-child uh, 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 bonding as well. So it's exactly. a very, very interesting way to see that. So uh, actually, uh, uh, did this uh, work out in a better manner? Because uh, uh, since you are not saying that we are a, some, an app which is not required to be watched by kids, so did it help uh, during this COVID or in general because parents don't want their kids to watch more, uh, a lot of uh, cartoons on their uh, laptop or uh, iPad? Absolutely. That's something that parents uh, appreciate the most. It's, it's not more sc screen time. And at the end of the day, uh, the, the app is only facilitating this uh, quality time be between parent and child. Uh, that's, that's all that the app does. And, and on, the, on the same token, it's taking you away from your messages. It's taking you away from your social media. So you are fully connected with your kid. So that, that's exactly what, what parents appreciate of Storybook. I was going through uh, your uh, 
the story and uh, some interesting interviews and i could uh, see a, a very emotional story coming out uh, from uh, spain if i'm not wrong wherein uh, a child had a very uh, challenging time and their parents were almost uh, uh, um, they had a tough time in terms of putting that kid to sleep and then because of storybook app things uh, uh, got better for them uh, mm. so uh, can you uh, speak a little bit more on that sure so the 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 really the, the important thing for us what keep uh, or or motivation what drives us uh, are those stories uh, we we do this for those families um, and we we have the two uh, uh, opposite sides of the spectrum parents with um, kids that just want to um, get them to sleep earlier and they don't have a like a like a medical condition and we have on the other side we have kids with strong medical conditions such as a uh, sleep a uh, sleep uh, problems uh, like medic medicated sleep problems um, i i think you're talking about a kid whose brain wasn't able to yes. produce melatonin at all yes and and since since he was born um, he wasn't able to sleep more than a few minutes a day uh, for just a small amounts of time um, the doctors gave him melatonin pills for a baby a, a few months old baby he was taking melatonin pills but that was causing him to feel depressed so it, it was, a, as the parents told us, he was a baby with no emotions. Like he couldn't cry, he couldn't laugh. It was without emotion. So the parents cut the treatment immediately and they um, tried to, to live with that condition. So mom moved to, to, to his room and, and she tried to sleep uh, close to him, but he couldn't sleep at all. It was a, it was a pretty complicated situation. And um, she tried the storybook. And from the first time, the kids slept throughout the night for the first time. And, and of course, that was a life-changing moment for them. They were extremely happy. They, they sent us an email. Uh, we were lucky enough to, to get an interview with them. And just like that, we have a few cases of kids with a, a autism a conditions who ju just by using Storybook were able to finally sleep or to, to express some emotions. Like it, some, some kids don't allow for anyone to touch them, even their parents. And by using a storybook, they were able to hug their kids for the first time. Or, yeah, we have really emotional stories. And we, we get to, to, to put some of those stories on our YouTube channel. Amazing, amazing. Uh, because uh, that, the initial years are where the parent and kid actually develop that bonding. And that goes a long way. And if, uh, uh, as a brand, you can, uh, are able to uh, uh, help in uh, developing that bond, then that's um, great work uh, done by storybook people. Uh, yes, thanks. Yeah. So uh, for any brand, uh, money is required to run the business. Uh, one is the revenue that you spoke about already. Uh, second is in terms of putting up the business together. So uh, is this startup bootstrapped or you got uh, investors on board? How is it? We were bootstrapped from day one. Um, yeah, we self-invested um, and, and we committed to this and we quit our jobs and we, we focused on getting this to work. Uh, it was crazy. It was chaotic at first. Um, but we were lucky enough to manage it through uh, to 2020, which was our uh, scale-up year. And, and then we met Jason, Jason Calacanis. And he loved Storybook. Um, he uh, invested in Storybook. He was the first external investor in Storybook. And after that, a, a few followed. So we, we filled that around pretty quickly after having Jason in. So now um, that uh, we made it through this first uh, angel round, we're getting ready for the next milestones. Amazing. Uh, that's a great growth story. And I've seen, uh, I've been following Jason for quite some time and I've seen that uh, uh, literally he helps uh, startups to be launched from his uh, uh, platform. So uh, <laughs> once uh, I have seen that a lot of startups after getting associated with Jason, uh, they just take off uh, and then they just keep growing. So very interesting to uh, know that you have been uh, uh, getting uh, enough funds. So uh, are you still looking out for uh, more investors or you have got enough on board now? For this round, we are we are good, uh, but we are already talking to investors for next round. We, we are planning a, a bigger race by mid 2021. And we are lucky enough to have Jason on, on our backs. And he has introduced us to uh, really interesting funds, top tier funds in the US. And now we are in talks to them, uh, preparing for this next round. So really excited about the future. Super. Uh, so uh, uh, you you are getting a lot of funds and a lot of money is coming in. So what are your plans for the near future? How are you planning to 
extend this brand or enhance this brand? So as of now, we are extremely focused on Storybook as a product. We are working really hard on getting the product to, to the stage and to the level that we, we think we can get it. Um, we are working on um, gamification, on, on getting a customized experience for every parent and for every child. So we're working really hard on that. Um, we are uh, uh, increasing the content library. We are um, already talking to some uh, famous uh, collaborators, famous voiceovers for some stories. Wow. Um, and, and yeah, the plan is to, to partner with some um, uh, big companies to, to produce co content and to um, get Storybook to more places. So that's, that's the focus for the next uh, year, pretty much, to, keep, to strengthen the product first and then to start scaling more, much more aggressively. And down the road, um, if you ask me five years from now, um, I think Storybook will be in a, in a great position with a, a great community. We, we are planning to have 300 million parents using Storybook and that community ultimately will be our biggest asset. We will we'll be able to provide more tools and more help and more um, education uh, and guidance um, through, the, uh, through the Storybook app. Great. Uh, a couple of points uh, before I wind up. Uh, uh, so uh, you spoke about parents and there are a few uh, uh, families wherein the grandparents are also there and they also uh, uh, sometimes they put the kid on to the bed. Uh, so uh, have you seen grand grandparents using uh, your uh, app? Yes. Uh, and that's a, that's a really cool question. Uh, we released a few uh, months ago a story that it's called uh, My Grand Grandpas. Uh, and it's one of the most popular ones. Um, it, it's my uh, youngest a favorite story um, uh, and yeah definitely there there are some parents that uh, uh, are lucky enough to have their their the kids grandparents close so they can use storybook with them or just uh, use storybook with their own parents but think about gra grandpa or grandma so so yeah so in india uh, once the baby is born you actually get people to come and massage uh, uh, at least during the uh, infant stages uh, so at least uh, till uh, say six months or eight months or maybe I have seen some parents doing it for 18 months and 24 months uh, but uh, it is uh, nice to see uh, that uh, uh, you actually brought out uh, or rather combined uh, uh, massage along with the storyline and also with the uh, soothing music and uh, it's actually a nice way to uh, uh, what you call uh, help the parents as well as the kid because I, I uh, so I have seen this uh, massaging techniques, um, uh, they, though they are uh, experts in doing massages, uh, they, so we end up calling them. So uh, we can see the child getting a relaxed the time after they go through the massage. Uh, and um, uh, in this uh, particular uh, thing that you're going to, uh, you are doing the storybook app. Uh, so does the parent need a, a special uh, learning technique or something like that to do the massage or he can just get going? That's a really good question. Um, and most of the techniques are inspired on Shantala massage, uh, which is the, the Indian massage for, for babies. And, and definitely India is the, the birthplace of, of massage. Uh, and we're taking this mainstream now through, through Storybook. Uh, but uh, ultimately, uh, as I, I told you uh, a few minutes ago, um, it's not as much important as uh, the, the, how well you do the techniques. The most important thing is for you to actually demonstrate physical love to your kid and rub his back or, um, I don't know, just have fun and enjoy that moment. Um, physical uh, 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 love, physical affection is, is really important in a, in a baby and, and even in, in adults. So that, that will increase, as you said, uh, you were on, on point on that. Uh, that will uh, um, create a stronger bond in, um, and that's something that will last throughout life. That's something that you, you start building and it's gonna last uh, forever. So. So yeah, it's not more about, it's not that important to do the techniques well. It's more important about actually just having fun and relaxing and yeah, and enjoying a quality time with your kid. Thank you, Francisco, for uh, being here today and uh, taking us through your uh, uh, startup journey of Star Storybook app. Uh, really amazing journey. And uh, I, I'm uh, gonna track you and uh, I'm gonna try this app for maybe during this weekend and see how my uh, daughter takes it up and uh, how quickly she can uh, fall asleep and I'll give you feedback on that definitely. 
uh, for the coming years uh, i can see that there are a lot of investors putting money on you and a lot of confidence uh, all the best and uh, hope uh, uh, to bring you back on this show when you are hitting some 300 million uh, uh, big community <laughs> more than happy to be back thanks so much vijay and looking forward to your feedback <laughs>